Hello, today we are going to talk about oblique projection, specifically cavalier projection and cabinet projection. Oblique projection is a simple type of technical drawing of graphical projections used for producing two-dimensional images of three-dimensional objects. The objects are not in perspective and so do not correspond to any view of an object that can be obtained in practice, but the technique is somewhat convincing and useful. In both oblique projections, cavalier and cabinet, you can see the X and Z axis form a 90 degree angle, which is going to be the plane which has the same shape and magnitude as the original drawing. The other axis Y usually forms a 135 degree angle with the other axis, but also can form different angles to this. In cavalier projection, the length of the three axes X, Y and Z are drawn with a 1 is to 1 scale. Unlike cavalier projection, where the Y axis keeps its length, with cabinet projection, the length of the receding lines is typically reduced to a scale 1 is to 2. You can also use different scales such as 1 is to 4 or 3 is to 4 to form different kinds of oblique projections. As you can see on the screen, we have the plan view, the side elevation and the end elevation of a cube. If we represent this cube in cavalier perspective, you can see the sides parallel to the Y axis appear longer than the others, even though they are not longer. So to avoid this optical illusion, we usually use a reduced scale in this Y axis, such as 3 is to 4 or 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 2, which is called cabinet projection and is the most commonly used scale because this scale is the most realistic looking. Okay, in this video we are going to learn how to construct any oblique projection with any y-axis scale. To do this we are going to use this simple object. We are going to start with a cabinet projection with a scale of 1 is to 2 on the y-axis. So the first step is to elongate the z-axis with a construction line as can be seen here on the screen in a blue line. So now with the compass set on the origin and with a radius we are going to transport this length once onto the y axis and twice onto the elongation of the z axis. One represents the numerator and two represents the denominator of the scale we are going to use. So now we are going to join these new points with a blue line which represents the reduction scale we are going to use. From now on we are going to transport real dimensions on the elongation of the z-axis and we are going to reduce them by drawing parallel lines to this one. If we want to use different reduction scales such as 3 is to 4 we are going to mark 3 on the y-axis and 4 on the elongation. The same with 1 is to 4. The process is always the same, the numerator on the y-axis and the denominator on the z-elongation. Okay, let's continue with this example. So to continue, we are going to set the compass to the total dimension on the y-axis on the plan view. And we are going to transport this onto the z-elongation as shown here. And now we are going to transport the other measurement of the y-axis on the plan view. So now to reduce these measurements we are going to draw parallel lines to the blue line starting at the marks obtaining two new points on the y-axis which are the reduced lengths on the y-axis. Here you can see in red the equivalent points in the plan view and in the cabinet projection. So the next step is to draw parallel construction lines to the x-axis from our two new points. And now vertical lines parallel to the z-axis from the two new points also.
as can be seen here on the screen. So now we set the compass to the total dimension of the object on the x-axis on the elevation view, which is also equal to the length on the z-axis, as can be seen here. And we are going to transport this length to the x and z-axis on the cabinet projection. I remind you that these two axes have not been reduced. Okay, so the last measurement we have to transport is this small height on the Z axis. We are going to transport it to the outermost part of the image that we see parallel to the Z axis. So the next step we are going to draw a parallel line to the y-axis from the mark on the z-axis until it cuts the next vertical line as shown. And now the parallel line to the x-axis from the same mark and the vertical line from the mark on the x-axis. So now we have the back part of the object. So we continue drawing parallel to the X passing the last mark. So here we join parallel to the Y axis, joining the last two points. And again, the outer side of our shape parallel to the y-axis in construction lines. Now we're going to draw parallel to the z-axis and join this front part again with construction lines. And finally we're going to join the two slanted lines on the front of our object. So now that we have an outline of our object in construction lines, now with thicker line we're going to outline our object. So first we'll start with the two slanted lines on the front of the object as shown here. And now we'll draw all the lines parallel to the x-axis. So now we'll continue drawing all the lines parallel to the z-axis to continue the outline of our shape. Okay, and here are the last three lines which are parallel to the y-axis. So now we have the outline of our shape. So here we have the final oblique cabinet projection of the object. So I hope this video has helped you. Please press like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to, you can always support us by pressing the super thanks button. Until the next video, thank you very much.